Okay. Uh, I'm going to draw the sun and the earth. Okay. Uh, so to introduce the topic, um, I'll point out there are basically Fg is the force of gravity, the pull due to gravity of the sun on the earth, which is equal to the force that the earth pulls on the sun, Newton's third law. Okay, so Fg or gravitational force, we can say. Gravitational force of the sun on the earth. Which equals minus gravitational force of the earth on the sun. Okay. And this is the only force between these two objects. Okay? That's the only force. Just gravity. No other forces. Not at that distance. Okay? So if that's the only force between the Earth and the Sun, I guess the question is why doesn't it just plummet into the center? I mean, it doesn't. Same for the Moon. The moon doesn't fall down and plummet to the Earth. So why doesn't it, this is the only force between these two objects, just gravity, their mutual attraction of gravity, because they have a lot of mass. The sun has a huge amount of mass, the earth not so much. Because the sun's so big, it appears that the earth basically moves around the sun. So why doesn't it, why doesn't it just fall in? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, right? Why doesn't the Earth, because that's the only force between the two things, that's the only actual force. Okay? And it, and it, why, don't, why doesn't it just... Okay? Any ideas? I'm sure you know why. Basically, because the Earth is moving in this direction, V. The Earth has a velocity, V. And because the Earth's moving in this direction and the force is perpendicular, can you see that that force is not going to reduce V? It's in, not in the right direction. What's, the, what's this going to do to this? What's the force going to do to the, uh, to the Earth? Nothing. Well, it'll do something, right? It won't change v because it's perpendicular, but it, what v, remember v is a vector, right? So what might it do? Anybody? Maybe I'm not. It'll deflect it. It's going to make, what the force is going to do is it's going to make this, it's going to pull on the earth. So at a, a little bit later, say here, the, the force of gravity is still directed to the sun, but the velocity is now pointing in this way, it's deflected. So it's constantly being deflected. So the V doesn't, the size of V, if you like, magnitude is constant. But the direction is constantly changing. Oops. So, you could say the reason why the Earth doesn't fall into the sun is because it doesn't want to, right? It's, it's the force that's pulling on it is perpendicular to the movement. That's a one fundamental property of something that's moving in circular motion. Right? Whenever something moves in a circle, the force 
on that object is always perpendicular to the velocity. So what it does is it doesn't change the size of the velocity, but it just change its direction. And whenever you have a change in direction, that means you have, what, what, what would you have? If you have a change in the direction of the velocity, you have a change in the velocity. And if you have a change in the velocity, you have an acceleration. So it's accelerating. So we can draw that out. Okay. Just to clarify. I mean, if you, it, it basically deflects continuously. So if you imagine doing this again and again and again, you could see that you might end up with something that basically not necessarily to scale, fg, fg, force of gravity, fg, fg, which if you like is a vector, and this would be the Earth. And at every point, the velocity is perpendicular to the force. So at every point in that motion, you're going to end up with a circle, right? So the force of gravity, Fg, if you like, if I write it as a vector, force of gravity, it's always perpendicular to V, the velocity, so it will not slow the Earth. It will not change the size of V, but it will change its direction. Okay. So if this is the direction of the force, what do you think is the direction of the acceleration of the Earth? Remember, F equals ma, right? So if that's the direction of the force, then the acceleration is in the same direction. Right? I mean, F equals ma. If this is the direction of the force, then the acceleration must be always towards the center of the circle. So this object, the Earth, is accelerating to the center. It's very, it's totally non-intuitive. Because it's accelerating to the center, so then in your mind you think it should just move to the center, but it's actually moving in a circle. So the acceleration is because the velocity vector, if you like, meh, yeah, I'll use my hand, not great. That's the velocity vector. Can you see how it's constantly, in some sense, moving towards the circle? It's be being bent. So the acceleration is, this is towards the center of the circle. So we can put on um, number F equals ma. So Fg equals ma. So a is to the center of the circle. That's one property of circular motion. The other, you could also say, well, where does the V come from? Right? Why is it constantly going round? So this comes from the creation of the solar system. When the solar system was created, you had a lot of matter. It formed a disk, started to rotate. And there's nothing to stop it rotating because we were basically in a vacuum. So it will just keep going. Okay? So it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a little non-intuitive because the thing that's making it go in a circle is perpendicular to the, to the trajectory. Normally when we talk about forces, we think the force is in the same direction as motion. But when it's circular motion, the force is perpendicular to the direction of motion. That's a characteristic of circular motion. The force is always perpendicular. If the force is perpendicular to the direction of motion, then you'll go in a circle because it'll constantly bend you. Unless you get close, unless you get, say, close to the, if, if you could somehow slow the Earth down in its orbit, then it would get closer, then that would change things, if you re could reduce V. But it's a vacuum, so, okay, it's a good question. 
I mean, another, let me show you another example. <coughs> So here we have, this is from the movie Gravity. Um, the sound, okay, well, all that, she's just going, uh, uh, uh. so basically, it's the same thing here. The spacecraft and the astronaut are float, they, they're above the Earth, all right? And what's happening is the gravitational force, the force of gravity on this astronaut and on this spacecraft is almost the same as it is on you and me right now. It's not much difference. It's a difference of maybe, maybe 10% because it's high up, okay? But the gravitational force is almost the same. But it looks completely different to us down here sitting in this classroom, okay? Because in the classroom, um, if, if I jump off, jump down, then I hit the ground and the ground stops me. In this case, the astronaut and the spacecraft or, and we'll see why more later, are constantly falling to Earth. So they're accelerating at around, around about 1 g, but that acceleration is due to their circular motion. So what they're actually doing here is they're doing exactly what they did with the Earth going around the Sun. They're orbiting. And because they're orbiting, they have an acceleration, and that acceleration is the same, is basically equivalent to the person falling to earth. I'm going to talk more about that. This idea of weightlessness is not trivial, okay? Um, but essentially, they're, they're accelerating to the earth, but they keep missing.